Hi and welcome back to this new video. In this video we are going to be doing a default rigging setup for game models. Now this tutorial is meant for people who want to learn how to do basic constraints or people who want to learn how to start getting into animation and want to be doing a bit of rigging on the side. If you only want to animate and only want to animate Fortnite models, Fortnite Porting, the program used for importing Fortnite models, will be coming out with the new default rig for the program. And I gotta say, it's looking pretty promising. Now again, this is a basic rigging tutorial. If you want to see more advanced rigging tutorials, I can definitely do that. I would love to do that. So let me know and let's get into the video. All right, let's begin. If you imported your game rig that doesn't look like this, I have another video on this channel that will fix that for you or help you fix it for you. We're gonna set our viewport display of our rig to octahedral which makes it a little easier to see for us when we're rigging what we're doing. Uh, I'm gonna set this viewport to flat and then texture. So let's begin with the arms. We're gonna make an IK rig for the arms. So when you put your hand down on a table and still wanna like move around and keep your hand on the table, that's what an IK rig does. So let's begin. What you can do in the beginning is make sure all of these bones look connected. So select the head end. This here is the head. This here is the tail of this bone right here. Basically, the base is the head. Select the head, press Shift S, oh, Shift S, and then cursor to select it. Now we can grab this bone, the clavicle, and press Shift S, and then selection to cursor. This is just for visual clarity, mainly for visual clarity. I'm gonna do that here and here as well. Now we're gonna duplicate the hand bone by pressing Shift D, scaling it up a bit, going into X ray mode right here, and we're gonna rename this bone IK hand period L. You can also make that period an underscore like the Fortnite namespace has. And now to make sure that this bone can move on its own without having the help of the arm and so that the arm doesn't freak out, we're gonna parent this IK bone to the root. So shift clicking the root right here and press Control P and keep offset. Go back into pose mode, make sure you have your IK hand selected and shift click your lower arm and press Shift I to add an IK constraint. Now with our lower arm selected, we're gonna set this chain length to two and as you can see when we select our IK bone we already have somewhat of a working IK rig but we don't want our hand to do whatever this is <laughs> so what we do to make our hand not rotate like this is basically grab this hand bone right here this hand L and we're gonna add a constraint which is going to be a copy rotation constraint and as you might have already guessed we're gonna copy the rotation of this IK hand bone now I typically have this little bar right here which you can basically pull out like this which I always use to get like to this little panel here and copy the bone names so basically just compress press ctrl c on this little you don't even have to click it just press ctrl c while hovering over it then go to the hand bone make sure you have your rig selected by eye dropping on the rig then ctrl v your bone right there and as you can see it copy its rotation perfectly very good very nice and now as you can see when you decrease this influence it also goes with the flow very nicely so this is already working nicely but we cannot really control where the elbow goes now and that's something we would like to have for this basic rig so what we're gonna do for that is grab this little head or tail here go to your move tool make sure this is set to global and press e to extrude and then press y to make sure that it goes in the y direction now we can grab this and parent it to the root like we did with the ik hand slide it out like this you don't have to go too far and make sure just for a visual appeal that this rotation here is set to zero now we're gonna call this by pressing f2 pull arm l now we copy this name, go into pose mode, then get to our constrained arm and set the pole target to, let's grab our armature again, this pole arm. Now this might happen, this might not happen with you, uh, where the arm completely rotates 180 degrees. That's no issue, basically just drag this all the way up or just set to 90 degrees, it might vary for some rigs. And as you can see, we can now determine where the elbow points at. Let's set this to, not x-ray anymore so this is basically the arm done and when we are done we can select the entire left arm here whoa, like this in edit mode press right click and then symmetrize oh make sure that you have the pole selected as well right click symmetrize boom and if we go into post mode right now as you can see when we select our ik hand bone this is you looking fine 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 look at this wow oh oh 
Ooh, okay. Now we're gonna move on to the legs. But something I want to show you first is how to hide bones in groups. Now, why is this useful? So that you can basically hide bones, a lot of bones at the same time. <laughs> For example, this entire group here is in the way of me making a good leg. So what I'm gonna do is just select this entire mess here like this. And then deselect our thigh right here by pressing shift and double clicking on the bone. And then we're gonna press M, make new bone collection and say skirt. Because in my case, this is a skirt. Now if we go here, we can just turn this one off. A lot more readable, a lot more clear. Now with the legs, we are gonna do almost exactly the same thing as with the arms. So again, this is not exactly necessary, but I like to do it still. I'm gonna make sure these bones connect with each other. Uh, grab this one and this one. And now we're just gonna grab the foot, duplicate it, size, scale, uh, scale, oh my God, scale it up. Going back into x-ray mode to make sure we can see. Naming this IK foot L, going into pose mode, shift clicking the calf, press shift I to make an active IK bone. Going into this constraint tab, setting this to two. As you can see, we already have it working. Oh my God. So this is what I meant by you have to <laughs> parent this IK bone to uh, the root uh, because otherwise that will happen. So control P and then keep offset. And now it, uh, oh, no, not that. Now, oh my God. Now it works completely fine, sort of. Kind of we <laughs> we really need that pole bone here as you can see because the knee doesn't know where to go so to fix that we're gonna grab our knee e y make sure this rotation is set to zero for appeal parent this to the root drag it out name this pull leg l copy its name go into post mode go into this under calf leg thingy make sure we have our rig selected and copy the pole leg bone name there yeah, and then set this pole angle to 180 again to make sure it looks okay. Boom, that works. Let's see. Uh, Yeah, so this tends to happen with Fortnite models. It's not great. Sometimes it can be fixed by just basically grabbing this right here and pulling it backwards a bit and then grabbing the knee and pulling this forward a bit. Maybe grab this one and pull it back a bit. And as you can see, it already looks better, but it's still, the knee still doesn't really point forward. So what we can do to fix that is basically grab this calf, go in here, go to inverse kinematics, press limit X and then pulling this value all the way down. And now it doesn't, it's gonna, oh, that's the wrong bone. Now it's gonna point forward all the time or at least towards the pole bone which is going yeah now we still want that foot to not do whatever it's doing now which is like following the lower the calf so we're gonna do the same as we did with the hand by adding a ro copy rotation constraint this one and then copying the ik bone oh that's the pole leg so this one and then copying it that, that there and boom we now have that working so this is a good enough working foot rig but what you probably would like to have is a roll control which makes sure that basically this toe stays on the ground so let's demonstrate that by all parenting this thing so this toe, this toe stays on the ground while you are making like a roll when you're walking like this wow but that's a bit more advanced than just this so we're not going to do that in this video but let me know if you do want a tutorial on that yeah <laughs> so for now i'm gonna parent this back Control p and i'm just gonna Select this entire leg light right here. Make sure that you have your pole selected as well and then symmetrize it. Boom. Let's see if this works. Great. Let's see if this works. Great. The poles are looking great and it works. Now I'm currently seeing that I accidentally left the pelvis bone in our skirt thingy here. And we do not want this. We don't want the pelvis because the pelvis select controls our entire body. We want that in our normal bone socket right here. So hide that again. Uh, what we're gonna do now is add a hip control. Now this is really fancy fancy. It's actually not really included in very basic rigs like this, but I wanna do it anyway, because if you wanna sway those hips, it's not gonna be easy. So what we're going to do is duplicate this bone, scale it up a bit, and now parent this pelvis bone to that bone by pressing Ctrl P. And we now have the same bone, but bigger we are going to parent the spine also to this bigger pelvis bone uh, and also rename the pelvis bone to uh, cog which stands for 
center of gravity. Now when we move our pelvis around you can see that it basically has turned into a thigh bone that basically only controls the thighs and you basically already have a thigh bone right now but you want to make those hips sway you know so you want to control that from like there. So what we're going to do now is we're going to duplicate this spine bone here you can either scale it up or scale it down i don't care uh we're gonna name this hips H hips <laughs> that's just it copy that and make sure that our pelvis is parented to the hips by pressing shift alt and then clicking the hips bone click the hips so you don't accidentally click the spine two bone here press ctrl p Keep offset and when we go in pose mode and rotate this now oh those hips sway they sway and they slay and now to make this even better we can also parent this spine bone to oh shift alt click and then hips to the hips and make sure that this spine bone is parented to the big cog bone boom and now, wow, it's even better. It's even more hipsy or more swayzy. Wow. We do need to make sure that the hips are parented to the cog as well. So keep offset. And now the rest of the body you can also control with this cog. Just this bone has now turned into like a hip bone. You can control the rest of the body with this bone now. And then this bone. And then this bone. Which is a good sacrifice if you ask me. Okay, so right now we have an arm rig, a leg rig, and a hip rig. But there's something wrong right now. And that is the fact that you can't turn off your IK. We kind of need to be able to turn off our IK arms because you only use IK arms maybe for half or even less of the times that you are using your arms. You typically use forward kinematics for your arms. So basically that if you move this bone, that this bone moves with it. So what we want to do is make a special button for that or a slider that turns our IK off and turns our arm back into FK, which I'm gonna introduce to you by also introducing drivers. So let me show you what I mean. Go into this bone icon and scroll all the way down to custom properties and we're gonna add one and we're gonna name this IK and that's okay. What we can do now is right click this value and copy this driver. Now we go into this lower arm bone and right click this influence and paste the driver and do the same with this copy rotation right here paste the driver in, the, in our hand bone. Now when we turn this slider down we basically have our IK rig bag. Wow. Look at that. Now, when you have this driver set up and you want to symmetrize your rig like this, you can see that it might not really transfer over. You have this value right here, but you don't have the driver here, which sucks. Blender, please do something about this. So you're gonna have to just redo this thing where you have to like copy as a new driver and then paste it in here and then paste it in here. And now it, it works again. So now this is, uh, oh, and then when you turn this up, oh, it is where oh. Now let's also do this for the legs. So we grab our IK bone, go in here, all the way down there, custom properties, name this IK, OK, copy driver, go in this bone, paste it right there, go in this bone and paste it right there. So now when you move this, you can see, oh, looks perfectly fine. It works. CC is awesome. Oh. And now you can just uh, symmetrize this over to there and do the same thing we did earlier with the arms where you copy this again and paste this in our influence here and paste that in our influence there. We can now also do this with the legs, but you usually want to leave those checked on. And now that we're talking about FK anyway, what I like, typically like to add in my rigs, this is a little bit of a advanced technique, but not really actually, uh, is when you like rotate the shoulder up that the arm doesn't exactly rotate with it. So instead of like, it does go up with it, but it stays like this. And then when you put it down, it also goes like this. This is useful when you shrug your shoulders because when you shrug your shoulders, your arms don't go up <laughs> with uh, your shoulders. So how we do that is we go into edit mode and we're gonna duplicate this bone. So let's go into expert mode. We're gonna duplicate this bone once, scale it down a bit. Now what we're gonna do with this bone is parent it to the root, control P, boom. And now we're gonna constrain it to copy the location and the scale of the shoulder, just not the rotation. Boom, boom, boom. And I set this road location to be tail. And then that's not gonna change anything. But when we parent this arm to this bone, which we're gonna do by going into 
edit mode and pressing alt p so entirely disconnecting it from everything and adding uh, an armature adding two weights in here and one of those bones is gonna be this bone right here so we're gonna do this and do, do that this bone and then the other one is going to be the clavicle right there and if we disable the clavicle now you can see that this arm rotates but not with the clavicle how crazy is that wow wow so when we rotate the body as well this arm is gonna stay like this and it might seem a little weird to you now but trust me when you're animating this is such a good feature to have and now you can also control whether you have this on or off by going into this bone mode and doing the exact same thing we just did for the eye case which is so we're gonna set this to world copy as new driver and putting this in oh not in there in here but for this one we want to make something different by editing this driver setting this to scripted expression and basically telling the driver to be the exact opposite of what this is and that is by basically multiplying it by minus one and then plus one yeah that's the inverted value of this yeah so when we go into this arm you can now also control whether you want to have that world or orientation or not so that's cool we're gonna oh we're gonna once again only select this because we don't want to duplicate symmetrize this again because it's gonna fuck up our driver there so right click symmetrize boom and then we're gonna have to copy this new driver again putting it in there putting it in there and editing this driver to say scripted expression x minus one plus one boom and now this one also does the world thingy where you can oh uh, did i do that wrong hello oh wait i have ik on for this one so that doesn't really work for when you have ik but uh yeah oh wow and that's pretty cool but we also want to do that with the head. Because if you want to have your head look at something, you typically don't want the head to look away when your body rotates like this. You, you typically want the head to keep looking at that object when you focus on that object like this. And then your body turns like this and then you're like, wow, don't want to look at you. Yeah, so it's nice to have in the head also basically the same thing. We're going to duplicate this, scale it down, call it world head. Yeah, parent this to the root by pressing Ctrl P and then just copy location, copy scale and then go into grab this armature, grab this armature, paste your neck and neck in there. Make sure that this is set to till. Now that bone is all fine. We are going to Alt P the head bone to make sure it's unconnected. Set this to armature, add two bones, which is going to be set this to armature, armature, Grab our neck, control C, put that in, oh, put that in as the first bone, and then this world head, and put that in as the second bone. Now, if we turn this neck off, you can see beautiful, he keeps looking at forward like this. Now, we're gonna just do the same thing for the head where we add a driver, new world, and then okay, copy this, and then go into here. I'm gonna set this to paste driver. I mean, just the base driver. I just realized we put this the wrong way around, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, we're gonna set this to scripted expression. X minus, I mean, yes, X, uh, kind of. And then plus, oh, plus one. Boom shakalaka. And now we can switch between these, as you can see here. Wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. And for the last thing that completes this rig, or not, not exactly the last thing, the last thing before the last thing, yeah. We're gonna add a bit of an eye rig in here. Turn this x-ray off for now. Oh, uh, oh yeah, I'm gonna also turn this to stick for now so that we can see the eyes better. Uh, at first you have to check that your eyes rotate correctly by selecting these eyelids and parenting to them to the head. Control P. And if the eye rotates correctly, that's good. If the eye doesn't rotate correctly, you just have to move this bone to be exactly in the middle of this eyeball. We are now going to make them look at something. So we're gonna grab this eyebrow, uh, duplicate it and drag it out. Just make sure that this bone is in the middle of those two bones. You can also just grab both bones and then in the middle add a bone. Now we can also duplicate this bone again, make it a bit smaller like this and call this eye bone. L or maybe add tracker in between tracker L boom and we're gonna name the big one I tracker oh, tracker parent make sure that this one is parented to the eye tracker big one 
and make sure that this one is either parented to the head or parented to the root. You can also use the same technique we used for the armature where we can use a driver to switch between the head and the root with the armature. But typically you want to parent, have this parented to the root. So just parent that to the root so that like the eyes, if you move the head, that the eyes still focus on what you're looking at. So we're gonna duplicate or symmetrize this bone right here. And now we're gonna make this eye track these bones right here. And you do that by adding either a damped track. I'm not sure if this is better than track two. I know it's easier than having track two. Huh. Hmm. 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 Yeah, track two is probably better. And for the track two, as you might be able to imagine, we're gonna have to track to this bone. So go into armature, grab our armature and just, uh, copy this and then go back into your eye and I'll copy that. Uh, what we're gonna have to do now is figure out what direction is gonna have to point in. I do not know, so I'm just gonna assume like we're gonna click to all these values like this and then like that and then like this and then like this and then like that. This doesn't work because the <laughs> you can't do X with X. And then Z with Y and Y with X and Z. And boom, now it works, as you can see. Yeah, so typically what you wanna do is uh, Y with Z. Uh, and then basically just symmetrize that. And now you can, whoa, as you can see, whoa. You can make him look at something. So these are pretty much the basic all of the basic things I would have in a very basic rig. But that does still not mean we're done. Because right now everything looks so sticky. Um, it just looks like sticks. And we want our main controls to not look like sticks. So one thing, one easy way to fix that is we can add custom shapes for that. So if we go into object mode, we can add a custom shape to have for our rig. In our case, I want to have a circle. I'll G that shit. Now let's move this circle to a new collection, which we're gonna call widgets, because this is a widget. So now we can use this circle to go into edit mode, I mean uh, post mode, and uh, grab your pelvis or your cog, for example. Scrolling down here in our bone section and setting this custom object to be our circle. And you can rotate your custom circle here, set this to 90 degrees exactly, and scale it up like this. And now we can have this custom shape for our thingy. Yeah, woohoo! And a cool feature that's added in the new Blender versions is that you can set this wire width to your will to any of your preferred widths. This is also nice to, for example, if you have like a line. So if we add a plane and delete these two here and then shift S, orange in there, boom. We now have a line. If we use this custom shape as like one of our upper arm bones here, uh, plane, Boom. We can set this to oh, be super thick. How cool is this? Oh, where am I pointing at? There we go. Set this to 90. And to make that line be good, we're gonna have to cut it in half. So I'll subdivide it and then delete this edge. Boom. Look at how cool that is. We can now also do that for more bones if you want by selecting the ones we find most important. And now what you want to do is go to edit, preferences, add-ons and type copy attributes. Make sure that this is enabled and press Control C and then bone shape. And then scroll down here and then Alt click this thing and then set it to eight. Boom. You now have these cool looking lines, those big lines, those minimalistic looking lines. How cool is that? And then you can just keep going and make your custom shapes and stuff if you want to do that. You really don't have to do that. <laughs> One more cool tip uh, for if you want to make custom shapes is if you want to add, for example, a box is go to mesh, cube, uh, edit, have everything selected, press X and then delete only faces, which it's gonna leave you with still these edges. And then you can just go ahead and go in here, for example, the spine five. I want to have this cube form. Wow, how cool is this? Yeah, but that's been it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it helped and I'll see you next time.